In this full lesson, I will explain you in details why creating correct angles is so important in pool games. First of all, we need to discuss what the correct angle is and how we can utilize these angles to improve our game. Especially beginner pool players often prefer not to leave a larger angle when potting balls and they believe that a straighter shot is better because it allows them to see exactly where they need to hit the object ball. And this is partially true because a straighter position does make the shot easier. However, after potting the object ball, they often encounter a big problem when trying to position the cue ball for the next shot. So let's imagine a situation like this, where we have the last three remaining balls on the table, and we have really simple shot on ball number 3 to the left middle pocket, while balls number 8 and 9 are positioned on different sides of the table. And now I will show you one of the biggest mistakes that every beginner pool player makes in this situation, and then I will explain how to rectify this problem to make this situation much easier. It is crucial to leave the correct angle on ball number 8, because in next step we need to make position for ball number 9, which is located on the other side of the table. While potting ball number 3, which is relatively simple, we often forget to consider the position of the cue ball after this shot. As you can see, if I play with topspin, we will have nearly a straight position for the 8 ball, and in this situation, making position for the 9 ball becomes almost impossible, because we don't have enough angle to transfer the cue ball to the other side of the table. This often leads to attempting to force the position by hitting the cue ball really hard or using a lot of spin, and unfortunately this approach can sometimes result in missing the object ball or completely losing position for the final ball on the table. To fix this problem, we always need to consider the correct line where we should leave the cue ball to have a larger angle, because this larger angle will provide us with a great opportunity to easily position ourselves for the next ball without applying a lot of speed or spin on the cue ball. And understanding this is one of the crucial keys to improving our position play and cue ball control in pool games. However, I need to show you another example to better understand that sometimes we can have a few correct angles to choose from. In this situation, we still have three remaining balls on the table. We have stride position for ball number 3, and we need to consider the position for ball number 8, because in next step we need to make a position for ball number 9, which is located in the top area of the table. If we play ball number 3 with a stop shot, we will leave the cue ball almost straight for the 8 ball, so in this case, making a position for the 9 ball will be much more difficult. We can try to cheat the pocket a bit by using deep backspin or a lot of topspin to position the cue ball for the 9 ball. However, this requires using a lot of power and spin during this shot, which makes it difficult to control. To avoid this, we need to consider the best place for the cue ball after potting ball number 3. In the first option, we can apply a bit of topspin to move the cue ball forward towards the bottom short rail. And as you can see, I have a really nice angle on the 8 ball, and now I don't need to use a lot of spin and speed to move the cue ball into the top area of the table. Alternatively, if we go back to the shot on ball number 3, we can use a second approach which involves applying a bit of backspin to move the cue ball into the center area of the table. In this position, we will have another really nice angle on the 8 ball to move the cue ball using two rails for the 9 ball. So let's make a quick summary. Always remember that the correct angles are different for each particular shot. It is recommended to always leave a smaller or larger angle on every ball. Use stride position only when necessary. Remember that using larger angles open better possibilities to easily position yourself for the next ball. And finally, try to determine the best possible position for the next ball to avoid unintended situations. 
and I am sure that this approach will improve your game really fast. I tried to find a perfect example to better understand this topic, and in this case I will use a highly useful pool drill from Pool Billiard CO, which you can find under number 29. This drill is another must-know for beginners and perfectly emphasizes the importance of angles in pool games. As you can see, we have 15 balls on the table arranged in an L shape, and our objective is to put all 15 balls into this corner pocket without making contact with any other ball. And I decided to prepare 3 different levels for you to choose from based on your skill level. In the first level, we can arrange the balls in any specific order as we wish, and our goal remains the same, to put all 15 balls into this corner pocket. However, we are not required to play the balls in numerical order, so in this case we are not pushed to create larger angles on every ball. And this method is highly recommended for beginners who want to learn how to put balls from various angles. In this level, we have a large margin of error, as even we miss the desired position for the next ball, we can select another remaining ball on the table. In my opinion, we should challenge ourselves to choose balls with larger angles to utilize the rails and develop a better understanding of playing balls from different and larger angles. With this approach, I am sure that you can build your confidence which will have an impact on your level of play during practice sessions or competitions. So you have just completed this method and you believe it was too easy for you? So now allow me to introduce a second method which will open your mind a bit more. In this level, we need to set up the balls in an L shape once again. However, this time it is crucial that each subsequent ball is placed from a different group. Our objective for the first step is to pocket all the balls from one group, and after that we need to remove the balls from the second group, and finally we must pocket the 8 ball. And remember that the 8 ball should be placed in the main point of the table. And this method is a bit more challenging because in the first step we need to focus on balls from one group and cannot make contact with any other ball during the shot. This time creating correct angles will be even more important because for the balls in the vertical line we should leave an angle towards the bottom short rail. However, for the balls in the horizontal line we should leave an angle towards the left long rail. Of course, sometimes a stride position will be really beneficial in making position for another ball. So, if you feel that the previous method was too easy for you, I am sure that this one will be much more challenging and effective. As you can see, if we remove balls from one group, we have more space to move the cue ball from one ball to another. And this is important to note, that I needed much more time to finish this layout due to increased concentration to make correct angles. And it is highly recommended that if you make a mistake on one shot, you should come back to the beginning, and this approach can help you become a better pressure player. Ok, so you just finished the second level and it didn't make any impression on you? You are looking for something much more challenging? So in this case, I will introduce you to the highest level of this drill, and I am sure that this one will be truly beneficial. In this method, we still have the same layout, but now we need to arrange the balls in numerical order. This time, it is crucial to make precise angles, because if we leave the cue ball in the wrong position, we may not have a chance to play the next ball without touching another. The last good position for the cue ball is a straight line, as it allows us to apply backspin and use the long rail to position the cue ball for the next shot. However, leaving a slight angle on the balls from the vertical line towards the bottom short rail can complicate matters often requiring side spin. Consequently, it is common to struggle with achieving a good position for the subsequent ball. In my opinion, the situation is slightly different when we are dealing with the balls from the 8 ball, because in this case we can leave both inside and outside angles, and both options provide us with the possibility of positioning for the next shot. 
Therefore, the best approach, in my opinion, is to focus on maintaining a straight line for each subsequent ball, as it allows us to better understand the margin of error. As I mentioned before, I try to create a comfortable angle towards the bottom short rail, but not too large, as it would require us to use more speed to pocket the ball, potentially resulting in a lost position. For the first few balls, I prefer using only one rail, as this approach provides us with a better sense of speed. While positioning the cue ball for the ball number 4, I didn't apply enough speed and only place it at a slight angle towards the bottom short rail. However, this is not a problem, as we can apply some side spin and use two rails to position ourselves for the next ball number 5. But this approach is much more challenging and requires a good understanding of speed and spin we need to apply in order to position the cue ball accurately. And once again, we have two options for positioning, and I have decided to take a similar approach as before to place the cue ball for ball number 6 using two rails. And this time, as you can see, I landed with the cue ball almost in a straight line with ball number 6 for the first time. However, as I mentioned before, this won't be a problem, because we only need to apply backspin and use the long rail to position ourselves for the next ball. In this shot, I applied a bit too little speed, resulting in an uncomfortable angle towards the bottom short rail. However, for this particular shot, we need to make position for the 8-ball without requiring another angle towards the bottom short rail. So we should apply backspin with a bit of left English to change the cue ball's trajectory after it bounces off the rail. And as you can see, I achieved another perfect angle on the 8-ball, and this time we only need to apply topspin and use short rail to make position for the 9-ball. And this time, I have almost straight position for the 9-ball, so we need to apply just a bit of backspin and create another comfortable position for ball number 10. With this angle on ball number 10, we can use long rail to move the cue ball and create the correct angle on ball number 11 towards the bottom short rail. To make it, we need to place the cue ball in the center area of the table, because from there, we will have a perfect position for the 11. And once again, we have a very comfortable angle and all what we need to do is apply a bit of topspin to move the cue ball towards ball number 12 using the short wheel. And as you can see, this shot resulted in a perfect position for ball number 12. And now our objective is to move the cue ball to ball number 13, utilizing only the long rail without applying any complicated spin or excessive speed. The position with a bit of an outside angle for ball number 13 is not a problem for us, because we can apply a bit of backspin and use the left side of the pocket to adjust the path of the cue ball. This will help us achieve a good position for the ball number 14. And during the next shot, we don't need to focus on creating any specific angle. Our goal should be to place the cue ball as close as possible to ball number 15, with a moderate angle to avoid making the final shot too challenging. As you can see, creating correct angles in pool games is crucial and often makes significant difference in the quality of our game. Understanding this topic is particularly important for beginners, because using the correct angles makes our game easier and more comfortable. We are not required to apply excessive spin or speed to the cue ball, which results in a more accurate shots. So I hope you find this video helpful and I kindly request you to give it a thumbs up and share your opinion in the comments regarding the importance of angles in pool games. If my videos are helpful for you, please consider subscribing to stay updated with a more helpful content. Thanks for watching guys and I hope to see you in the next lesson. Take care!